Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 8, the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesy both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakodash. Thanks, double honors to the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone, the one that taught me the 100% truth according to the Bible. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akims. Keep pushing, keep believing, keep the faith, regardless of people here forbear. The prophets are prophesying. All right? The word prophesied means to tell you something before it happened. It means to say before. The Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, who you ignorantly call God and Jesus Christ, got His prophets on the street telling you what's going to happen before it even happened. Are you not taking heed? Are you not listening? Do you not realize what's going on? Destruction is coming. But before it comes, the Lord got his prophets on the highway and the byways doing sit down videos telling you same thing he did with Noah. Same thing he did with Lot. But the average Israelite, Negro, Latino, Native American, they're still not taking heed. Jeremiah 28 and 8. The prophets that have been before me. And before thee of old, Jeremiah said the prophets that was before him, before he came on the scene. And before thee of old prophesied, all the prophets of the Lord, they prophesied, man. Each and every last one of them. Why? Because that's the spirit of the Lord, Yahweh Shai. That's the spirit of the Lord. To prophesy means you have the spirit of the Lord on you. The men inside there prophesying, you have the spirit of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, on you, man. All right? This is the prophets that have been before me. And before thee of old, they prophesied. Both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war. The promise prophesied of war, man. All right? Not smooth things. They told, look, they didn't tell you what you wanted to hear. They told you the truth according to the Bible. And that's something the average, average Israelite don't want to hear. They don't want to hear the truth. All right? They want to hear lies. We're not here to feed you with lies. We're here to feed you with the truth, man. Against great kingdoms of war and of evil. Before these bad times, because the word evil means bad times. Eve meaning time, ill meaning bad. Before the bad times pop off and before things spring forth, the Lord have a prophet tell you of it, right? And of pestilence. We're going through a pestilence now. Crown Royal, you know, pestilences all throughout the earth, man. And the, and before these things spring forth, the prophets tell you of it. Let's get that precept though, because that's the spirit of the Lord. So you got a whole lot of these prophets out here. They're not coming in the spirit of the Lord. Yeah, I was shot. The, the the average Israelite group don't even prophesy. Basically, just to be truthful. Everybody said, Let, let's, let's keep it real, right? Let's just keep it real, right? The only group really that's prophesying every day, according to the Bible, is Great Millstone. And a couple of camps affiliated with Great Millstone. Only one prophesying. And that's the Spirit of the Lord Yahweh Shai, Revelation chapter 19, verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said it to me, See thou do it not. This John the Revelator seeing an angel. And he got ready to bow down to the angels. And the angel said, see, look, don't do it. Don't you do it. Stand up. I am thy fellow servant. And of thy brethren. That have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Who they eagerly called Jesus. Worship Yahweh. For the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. And that's the spirit that his men are coming in. The spirit of prophecy. But the Lord said, look, the mysteries, the secrets was only given unto you to prophesy. Every Israelite can't prophesy because they wasn't given the secrets, man. And I'm going to get that right quick.
Every Israelite, Negro, Latino, and Native American were not given the secrets, was not given the mysteries, right? This is St. Matthew, so we got to be very thankful, man. St. Matthew chapter 13, verse 9. Who have ears to hear, let them hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? What's a parable? A riddle, a deep, dark secret, an allegory, a mystery, right? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, but to the majority of the Israelites, Negroes, Latinos, and Native American any so-called, that's what they're being called right about them, it wasn't given. So the mysteries and the secrets was given to us, right? So we got to go out there and reveal it. We got to go out there and reveal the secrets that Yahweh Bashim al gave to us through the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, you know? And we're gonna we're gonna get it right quick. We got to reveal the secrets. Amos chapter three. I start at six. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil? Meaning bad times. Then Jeremiah said the prophet prophesied of evil. Meaning bad times. Shall there be evil in the city? Meaning bad times. Right? Who's controlling all the evils? The bad times that you see going throughout the four corners of the earth. Shall there be evil in the city? And the Lord, Yahweh by Shemiah was shy, have not done it. Surely the Lord power will do nothing. But he revealeth the secret and to his service the prophets. And to say the service went to the highway and the byways. And proclaimed the words of Yahweh by Shemiah was shy. They revealed the mysteries. They revealed the secrets. Everything that was revealed to them, they revealed to the people, man. And it's an ongoing le legacy. It's an ongoing legacy. Let's get Isaiah. Let's go right back to Isaiah. Quick little lesson through the spirit of your house. But she sure it's all about prophecy, man. All right? Isaiah chapter 42, verse 9. Behold, which means to look, the former things are come to pass. And new things do I declare before they spring forth. I tell you of them. What is that called? Prophecy. All right? Prophesying. To say before. But look, look. Before they spring forth, I tell you of it, right? Behold, the former things are come to pass. We tell you about the former things. And as soon as the new things come to pass, like the MOB, you know? Which is the, which is the RFID chip. Martial law, famine, cannibalism, World War III, race wars, class wars, civil wars. Before these things spring forth, look, the Lord got us telling you about it. Now, if you don't take heed, then who, who is that on? Who is that on? Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Look, the ones that don't take heed to this word, who is that really on? Is, is it on the prophet? Is it on the prophet that gave you warning? Let's get that right quick. Ezekiel. Let's get that. Ezekiel chapter 3. We'll start at verse 4. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 4. And he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel, a people before some place, and speak with my words unto them. And that's what we're doing. We're speaking the words of prophecy unto the house of Israel. Which consists of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians. Verse 17. Ezekiel 3 and 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word of my mouth and give them warning from me. Warn them about the evils. Warn them about war. Warn them about pestilence. All right? Warn them about the death and destruction that's going to befall this place and throughout the four corners of the earth. Warn them about how Lord Yahweh Shai, who they even call Jesus Christ, is coming back. Warn them, damn it. The Lord said, give them warning from me. Don't despise prophesying. Let's get that. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19. Quench not the spirit. When it's time to bring it out, bring it out. Don't quench the spirit. 
despise not prophesying when it comes to going out there telling your people what's going to happen before it happens according to the bible don't despise it do not hate it all right do not hate prophesying because the scripture says, if you do this thing willingly, then, then you're going to get a reward. You know? And this is our duty. Regardless of the reward or not, this is our duty, man. All right? This is the least that we can do. This gospel was here for over 2,000 years, man. And now, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh tries to bring it back to our remembrance. You know? This is the least that we can do. Let's get it again. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good, man. And what's good? This word, man. Hold fast to it. With your dear life, hold fast on to it with your dear life, man. Because this is getting ready to show up going down. Look, the Lord's gonna bring this place down. Let's go back to Isaiah. He's doing it now. You know? This is Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 5. For every battle of the world. Because remember, we just read about war. He says the men of the Lord prophesied of evil, they prophesied of war, they prophesied of pestilence. Death, destruction, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 5. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. That's going into those ancient battles. How the wars were fought. You know, the civil wars. You know, you watch movies like 300, The Gladiator. You know, Troy. It shows you how the ancient battles were fought. Remember what we just read in Isaiah 42 and 9? They prophesied of the former things and new things do I declare before they spring forth. We tell you of it, all right? So we go into the history and we go into the future, right? According to the Bible. But this, this war, the war to end all wars shall be with burning and fuel of fire. This war. It's going to be with burning and fuel of fire. And look, and before it spring forth, we tell you of it. You got these pastors in these churches, and I'm saying, tell them ain't nothing going to happen. It's all peaceful. It's all lovey dovey. You know, it's all lovey dovey. Ain't no tribulation, ain't no destruction, ain't no famine, ain't no race wars, class wars, civil wars. When you see all that brewing up. You see all these things brewing up. So let's get this. Let's go right back to um First Thessalonians. Let's go right back to First Thessalonians, man. The fifth chapter. This is First Thessalonians, chapter five. Cause the pastors and these fake prophets say ain't nothing happening. Ain't nothing coming. You ain't look, you ain't got nothing to worry about according to them, right? This is first Thessalonians chapter five, verse three. For when they shall say peace and safety because that's what everybody's hollering right peace and safety when the men of the lord are prophesying right for when they shall say peace and safety this sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and look look and they shall not escape all you Israelites that still sleep and you don't want, want to wake the hell up all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness just remember that Israel all the unfaithful shall die. You don't believe in the words of prophecy? When the Lord tell you something, you still don't believe it? Well, get caught out there, you and that pastor. And like the scriptures say, if, if that prophet be deceived, when he has spoken a thing, I, the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh have deceived that prophet. And the Lord said, and I will cut that prophet off from among my children, Israel, Lord says he's going to stretch out his hand uh, look, to those false prophets to destroy them and take them off the earth for lying to the people, man. Jeremiah 14. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 15. And it reads, Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name. And I sent them not. Yet they say, 
sword and famine shall not be in this land. They give you false hope. They give you false visions, right? They say it ain't going to be no famine. It ain't going to be no lack of bread when the Lord clearly tell you that it's going to be a famine, right? Yet they say sword and famine shall not be in this land. By sword, which is sword represents destruction, and by famine, a lack of bread. Shall those prophets be consumed? And look, and we tell you that before it even happens. That's prophecy for you, man. Before Yahweh by Shemiah shall destroy those false prophets. You saw that lying to you? He got the real prophets telling you about it before it even happened. They tell you that peace is coming. They tell you that everything is going to be all safe. No tribulation, no nothing. No bad days on the, um, just, just, just the sun just shining like I don't know what. Well, that's false. That's a lie, Israel. And like the scripture said, before they spring forth, we tell you what. Before these things happen, the Lord got us telling you about it, man. So don't, don't despise prophesying. Remember, this word was taken away from us for many years, man. A whole lot of people are going to die. The scripture says, great misery shall come upon these people. Second Ezra chapter 15. Remember, it's all about that prophecy, right? Second Ezra chapter 15. And that's the spirit of the Lord. Verse 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. Remember, for when they shall say peace and safety, this sudden destruction come upon them as travail upon a woman with child. Remember the false prophets say sword and famine ain't gonna come. They got you building communities, they got you building houses. You ain't even focused on what's really going going on. You see all hell breaking loose, but you somewhere in the woods trying to build a house. You know, partying, drinking. Remember, it's better to go to the house of mourning. Than to go to the house of feasting Because that's the end of all men Fire is going to hit this place soon Come on Speak thou in the ears of my people The words of prophecy Which I will put in thy mouth Said the Lord Yahweh by Shemiah Shai. So the Lord put his words in our mouth He said go get thee into the house of Israel And speak with my words unto them And that's exactly what we're doing And cause them to be written in paper For they are faithful and true Fear not the imagination against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. So the Israelites that are not taking heed to this word, you don't have faith in these words. The Lord said, all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness, right? Behold, saith the Lord, Yahweh by Shemiah Shai, behold, I will bring plagues upon the world. Remember, we're prophesying. Before these plagues come upon the earth, you all, you all, you have men tell you about it, right? I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. But oh yeah, it's an Israelite party, right? It's an Israelite party. The men of the Lord are supposed to be moving with fear, just like Noah. Let's get that precept right quick. It's supposed to be in the spirit of Noah, man. And the, and the other prophets and apostles, man. Hebrews chapter 11. Because the Lord said without faith, you know what I'm saying? Look, you're going to die in your unfaithfulness. So I want to start off with six. Matter of fact, I read one. I jump to six and I read seven. Hebrews chapter 11, verse one. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So when we speak these words of privacy to you, the only way you're going to believe in it is if you have faith. That gift of faith to believe in something that you don't see. The average Israelite say, man, y'all talking that crazy stuff. Y'all talking that space stuff, man. Hey, what y'all talking ain't coming to pass. So you got to have faith to believe in these words, right? Verse 6, but without faith, to believe in something that you don't see, we just read in verse 1. It is impossible to please him, to please the heavenly father and his son without faith. For he that cometh to Yahweh must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So if you're diligently seeking Yahweh by Shemiah of Shine, you're occupied in prophecy, you're pleasing the Lord. By faith, Noah, being warned of the Most High, of things not seen as yet, Noah didn't see rain. 
but he was warned that it was gonna come, right? Nor didn't mock, he didn't scoff. He believed, as soon as he heard it, he believed. He believed of the things that he hadn't seen yet. Said he moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world The same thing Jeremiah said Said the prophets prophesied both Against many countries and against great kingdoms That's the same spirit that Noah had What it say By the which he condemned the world And became heir of righteousness Which is by faith So, so Noah had faith Jeremiah had faith Isaiah had faith All the prophets of the Lord had faith man Alright Cause that's what it took to please the Lord. So let's go back. Second Ezra, the fifteenth chapter, verse five again. Behold, saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, I will bring plagues upon the world: the sword, famine, death, and destruction. And before it spring forth, we tell you of it. You have no excuse in that day, Israel. You have heard the trumpet being blown. Someone gave you the warning. Men was on the corner prophesying week in and week out. Since the late 60s to the early 70s. So how much judgment do you think the Lord is going to bring upon this place? Upon, upon the disobedient children, man. It took that long. You Look, read the account about the flood. The people died a horrible death and extrapolate. When you read these stories, extrapolate, put yourself in that in that era. You know? Jump inside the book and put yourself there, man. You know? It says, for wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and the hurtful works are fulfilled, man. Alright? Let's jump down. 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. Destruction. For the sword and their destruction draw off not. And one people shall stand up to fight against another. Went through that already. Race wars, class wars, civil wars. You know? All of the above. And what's the modern day sword? The gun. You know, gun sales that went off the roof. Yeah, all that ammunition that was bought recently. But oh yeah, our people, you no know saying, still playing around. They don't believe the words of prophecy, right? It says, for there shall be sedition among men. Don't you got that happening right about now? People invading the governments, people exciting other people to go against the government. Are you not seeing that? That's what you would call sedition among men. And invading one another. They're going up into government buildings. They ain't can no more. And invading one another. They should not regard their kings nor princes, but the Bible is a fairy tale book, right? The Bible prophesied of these things thousands of years ago from the beginning, like the Lord said. He said he declared the end from the beginning, man. So all these things was written, man. And invading one another, they shall not regard the kings nor princes. And the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire, look, look, a man shall desire to go into a city. And shall not be able. Are you not hearing what the scriptures are saying, Israel? The Lord is basically telling you it's gonna come a day where you ain't gonna believe, you ain't gonna be able to leave the house, let alone go to the next city. Why? Because the martial law is gonna pop off. But and look, and before it spring forth, he got men on the highways and byways telling you about it, so it ain't no excuse. No more excuses, Israel. When that, when that wrath of the Lord come upon you, look, no excuses, Israel. Look, you look, you pretty much asked for it, Israel. You pretty much asked for it, didn't you? A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. Why? Because all hell going to be breaking loose and they're going to have to call for martial law. And because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The, all, all these cities are going to be on fire, man. The Lord said, look, before he even comes, this place is going to already be on fire. And what is the Lord going to bring? More fire. More fire. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed. And men shall be afraid. But you playing around? Not taking heed to the word? A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. No one is going to cry for you. No one is going to feel bad for you, right? When all hell break loose. But shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil, meaning rob their goods, 
because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. That's why the Lord says, seek him now. For in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. And that's what's coming, vengeance. Jumping to verse 49, 2nd Ezra chapter 15 verse 49. I will send plagues upon thee, widowhood. A whole lot of women husbands are going to get drafted off for World War Three, The Third War's War, you know? You're going to get straight up drafted off, man, you thugs, you know. You killers, whatever you, whatever title you calling yourself, you gangsters, y'all gonna get drafted off soon, come in, all right? Y'all got to go over there and fight that war over there in the Middle East, right? Widowhood, poverty. It's gonna be more job losses this month. It's gonna be more homeless people this month. Famine, a lack of bread, sword, and pestilence to waste their houses with destruction and death. And who's doing it all? The Lord. We read, shall there be evil in the city and the Lord have not done it? Yahweh by Shem Yahushua is controlling the whole scene. The whole scene. Look, the Lord is controlling the whole scene, man. And it's a beautiful thing. That's why the scripture says it's a fearful thing. Keep quoting it. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power, man. Straight up fearful. Fearful. A terrible, the terrible acts of the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 7. Verse 20, and it reads, Therefore, thus saith the Lord. Right? Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, behold, mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon Babylon, upon man, upon beast, and upon the trees of the field, and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn. And shall not be quenched. And it shall burn. And shall not be quenched. And look, and before it spring forth, didn't the Lord have somebody to tell you of it? Before it spring forth, we, look, he had us tell her, tell you about it, man. Tell me that ain't a merciful power. And I want I almost definitely gotta get this. Let's get this Colossians right quick. Colossians chapter 1, verse 26, and it reads, even the mystery. Remember, the secrets, the mysteries will reveal to the servants, the prophets, right? Even the mystery which have been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest. The word manifest means to make known, but now is made manifest to his saints. Who are the saints? The Israelites. And on this side, the elect of the nation of Israel, because two-thirds are considered heathens according to the Bible, right? Basically dead Dead men, women, and children walking Remember Revelation uh, What is it? 11 and 8 And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city Which is America They spiritually dead Not knowing who they is And if they do know who they are They still don't give a damn Israel don't give a damn Those Latinos and Native Americans They don't care about the mysteries of the Lord They don't care about the prophecies of Yahweh by Shem Shai But we do Once again Colossians chapter 1 verse 26 Even the mystery which have been hid from ages A long time We went a long time without this word Israel A long time without this word And from generations but now is made manifest to his saints. So Yahweh Bashim Shai has finally given us this word again. And remember, this gospel shall be preached into all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. And then shall the end come, Israel. So look, so you know we at the end of this thing now. You know, look, we're at the end of the deal now. You know? And I, I want to get that too. St. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the and then and only then shall the end come the end of this age man remember esau is the end of the world jacob is the beginning of it the follow so esau eat of sleazy eat is the end of an age and jacob you negroes latinos and native americans the hebrew israelites are the beginning of it that follow us man all right and it's, and it's a beautiful thing it's a beautiful thing. So regardless, if you're here for a bear, you're going to know that a prophet has been among you. And I must be allowed to get that too. 
Let's go right back to Ezekiel. I must be allowed to read that. You're going to know that a prophet had been among you. You wait till it really start popping off like Auburn Redenbacher. This is Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 5. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, whether they take heed or they don't, Israel, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there had been a prophet among them. You wait to all hell break loose. They're going to consider that a prophet had been among them. But for the majority of our people, you know it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late for the average Israelite, man. All right? It's going to be too late to turn back, man. So turn back now. You, you heard about all the things that the Lord said was going to come. And before they spring forth, we tell you of it, man. So I got one more scripture and then I'm going to wrap it up. I got one more scripture and then I'm going to wrap it up. You're going to know that a prophet had been among you though before it's all said and done. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And I got one more after this. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Verse 16. And it reads, For though I preach the gospel, this good news, that's the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me it was necessary that we preach this gospel, right? It says, For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. Destruction. Remember, the mystery was given unto you. They, they revealed the secrets unto you. Now it's your job to go out there and reveal the secrets unto the Israelites. It says, Woe, destruction is unto me if I preach not the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. And like I quoted through the spirit earlier, man, it's our duty to teach this word. And if and the phone chimed in, and the phone chimed in, Israel, it's our duty to teach this gospel. This blessed word, man. And this is my final scripture. St. Luke chapter 17. St. Luke chapter 17, verse 10, and it reads, So likewise ye, and it's red letter, Lord Yahweh Shai speaking, who the ignorant called Jesus, right? So likewise ye, when ye, when, ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded of you, remember the Lord commanded us to go to the highways and the byways to teach this word? It's the in season, out of season. It says, when ye, when ye have, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. Stay humble. Remember, the Lord allowed us to teach this word, right? We are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. This is our duty. One thing we're doing is our duty, man. All right? This is our duty to prophesy these words, all right? Week in and week out. Re remember, the Lord is going to burn this place soon. Come, remember? A day that's going to come, it's going to burn as an oven. And all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that coming shall burn them up. Thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Bible. Our duty shall awake.